Today I'm going to review user code from Waffle Patterns and show you some fabric. Hi, I'm Alex and this is Gingerhead & Co, my sewing vlog. Today I'm going to talk mainly about my user code, my ever favorite <laughs> pattern. And I'm going to review the pattern because I like it so much and I think the pattern should go worldwide, <laughs> should be more popular. The user raglan coat is from Waffle UK patterns or Waffle patterns, whatever you want to call them. And I'm going to <laughs> I'm going to show you the coat first. So this is the coat. I made it in really heavy fabric and uh, I used really slippery lining. I'm going to include some footage of me wearing it and uh, some photos perhaps because I don't think you can see it that well. So let's start with the basics. <laughs> the line drawings are here. And the coat can be done either as a straight hem, as in here, or as a curved hem, as in here. You can have either weld pockets or you can have patch pockets that are slightly different, that shape. And it's an oversized coat with raglan sleeves, double breast front, and this really big, huge funnel neck. And it can be worn open. <laughs> So you can basically play with the color as well. And it comes in sizes 34 to 48, which is roughly in UK, six to 20. <laughs> the bust would be 80 centimeters for size 34, or if you prefer 31 and a half inches for size six, that's the same size. The biggest size, so size 48 or size 20 in the UK would be bust 110 centimeters or 43.3 inches. The waist, the smallest one is 62 centimeters or 24.4 inches. And the biggest one, so size 48 or size 20, <laughs> 92 centimeters, that's the waist, or 36.2 inches. And the hip would be 86 centimeters for the smallest size, 33.8 inches that is or for size 48, so the biggest size, 45.6 inches. But the coat is really oversized. So I made size 36, the smallest size, and I think it's, it's really huge. I can wear layers and layers of clothes and it's absolutely fine. It's got a lot of room. There is a lot of ease. You can possibly go a size smaller. And I think if I made size smaller, if there was a smaller size, it would still fit. And the fabric that you would need is some sort of coat fabric, preferably with some, some body, some structure, quite heavy. It can really cope with heavy fabric. So anything like wool, wool blends, melt and boiled wool, anything like that, any sort of coating really. And the lining, well, whatever you want. And I think the lining could also be done with interlining, so you can make it even warmer if you want. It's a brilliant coat with lots of room for manoeuvre, you would need about 3 meters, so 2.7 meters or 2.9 yards for the smaller sizes, 34, 36 of the main fabric. And you would need about 3.2, so 3.5, let's say, 3.5 meters, 3.5 yards if you prefer, for bigger sizes. I think, I mean, I, I definitely used less than 3 meters for the smallest size, but it's always good to have some, some spare fabric so go for like three and a half meters or three meters if you are a small size for a coat just in case things can go wrong then you would also need lining but lining well up to two meters so 1.7 meters for the smaller sizes and two meters of lining fabric for the bigger sizes and it's true i think well i probably used about one and a half meters of my lining but again i always allow for some room for maneuver. Sometimes we make mistakes and it's good to have a bit more. And interfacing, you will need quite a lot of interfacing. I think you need at least a meter, I would probably say even more, of interfacing. Just ordinary code interfacing. Good interfacing is always better than bad interfacing. If you have tailoring in interfacing, that's brilliant. It depends how much money you want to spend. Then buttons, or in my case, snaps. Well, the pattern suggests either buttons or a combination of buttons and snaps. I just used snaps and I'm very happy with it. I wouldn't say it's a very easy coat to make. Do you want me to put it on? I'm going to boil because my fabric is really, really heavy, but it looks like that. 
it's you can wear it like that or you can just close the, the you can just close the funnel you're not going to hear me if i close it and to be very very warm and the first thing that attracted me to the coat was <laughs> this funnel neck line or funnel neck because i'm always cold and as you can probably hear even now my voice is a bit rough because it's cold and i always have kind of harsh not very sexy <laughs> voice in the winter so you can wear it like that and i think the coat has got this sporty look not too elaborate elegance it's very comfortable it takes some time to make it and i wouldn't recommend this button to beginners because if that was the first code that you're ever going to make. You can make it, but you would have to be persistent and go very slowly, carefully, reading the instructions carefully. The instructions in waffle patterns are always brilliant. There are some tiny, I would say, imperfections in translating sometimes. I think that the girl who does the patterns is Japanese, but she lives in Denmark, I think. I can check. She's got a blog. And on the blog, she's got a lot of useful tips and advice how to make certain things. She's made this coat recently, and I think it was in some padded fabric. So you can follow her on Instagram and <laughs> you will have more ideas what to do with the buttons. I've always liked waffle buttons. I'm definitely a huge fan. I think they're underappreciated because they always have a lot of details and everything is very professional. I remember that I started making the first coat from Waffle Patterns about three years ago. I never made it really. I made the muslin that was toasty, toasty jacket, the utility jacket. And I am going to make it, I just don't have the fabric that I would like to make it in yet. But I was impressed by the details and the explanations that were highly professional. It really is like from, well, let's say fashion industry, maybe not the highest of the fashion industries, but that is something that you would learn on a course of coat making. For example, you use a lot of interfacing and if you follow a channel on YouTube, Atelier Saison, it's a Japanese, well, clothing company, very small factory, and they just show you how they make their clothes. There are a lot of techniques that the girl from Waffle uses in her patterns that um, Atelier Saison shows in their videos. So if something is not clear, you can probably find it in this Japanese sewing factory or whatever the channel full name is, videos. I would definitely recommend the channel. If you have not seen it, go and check because it's brilliant. You can learn a lot, even though they don't really say anything in the videos but you can watch and learn so there is a lot of interfacing and i interface all my codes according to what waffle patterns suggest so for example i interface the hems because they they kind of keep for longer they are not destroyed very easily and hems are a weak spot in patterns in the coats I am getting hot. Well, anyway, I made mine in some acrylic blend. I'm not sure if there is wool in it, but this one is from Colville. It was really inexpensive. It's incredibly hot. <laughs> so it's like wearing a blanket, a very, very warm blanket. It's got a nap, so I had to be careful cutting out. I had to be double careful cutting out because I wanted to match the, the check. So sort of, and I'm showing you the, the worst spot. But the worst spot is because I wanted to match the sleeves and the sleeves are matched. The sleeves are two part. Can you see the seam here? So I wanted that to match and I wanted the inside seam to match, right? And I wanted side seams to match and I wanted the back to match, right? Can you see that? <laughs> and I, also, I managed to match the sleeves here. It's quite difficult to show you. But. So, I decided that the front could be, well, sort of mismatched, as you can... I'll close it and I'll show you. So, when I close it, it's roughly matched, but it's not matched here. And I thought I could do that because it's more important in general for me to match the lines to match than the front that is going to be mainly closed because the reason I did that 
<laughs> I'm getting chaotic. The reason I did that was the side seams, the lines on the side seams wouldn't match. The only thing that I didn't match and I do regret it, I mean, I had not planned to match it because I just, I, well, that's, that's the lack of experience. I made weld pockets in mine and I didn't really think about how they were going to be placed. So I just put them like that. And as soon as I put them, I thought I could have matched the, the pattern as well. Well, too late, but it doesn't bother me, especially that that was the first time I made the, the coat. The coat probably took me, well, I don't like sewing coats in one day, so it took me three days, <laughs> the cutting out of the pattern, first the paper pattern and then the fabric, then sewing, sewing of the lining and sewing of the coat. I don't like rushing my coats because if I make a mistake, it takes twice as long. I suppose it would take a few hours. It depends how fast or slow sewer, sewist you are. But I don't think it should take more than 10 hours, even if you take your time. It's good to take some breaks and reread the pattern and kind of be in the mental state that will prevent you from making mistakes. Because if you make mistakes, you have to do it again, which takes far more than if you do everything right. So I suppose it would be a perfect pattern for an intermediate level sewist. And you would be very happy with it if you like the silhouette. The silhouette is again kind of cocoon shape, which means that you can wear layers and layers. And you can play with a lot. So you can play with patterns on the fabric, where you can play with type of coating that you're going to use. It's really satisfying and you can learn a lot by making coats. And I think this is probably one of the best patterns, coats patterns, that I've encountered. I like making coats. I've made quite a few <laughs> and some of them were more successful. Some of them were not successful at all. This one is at the moment my favorite ever. And I am going to wear it a lot because I can match it with plenty of my clothes. This is purely my style. I would definitely, definitely recommend it. And I'm going to take it off and talk about some fabric that I got for coats as well. Because I'm getting really hot. I'm going to use the opportunity to talk about fabric because I got this fabric for Christmas and it was on my list. I wanted this fabric for Christmas. This is wool from M. Rosenberg and Son, or as they are now called, Stitch Fabric. It is really, really good quality, as you can probably guess, because M. Rosenberg and Son are famous for the quality of, especially wools. I love their wools. And it is rusty orange. Okay, I'll show you. I've, I'll open it and I'll show you. And it, it smells divine. It smells of kind of raw wool. It smells nice. Raw wool smells nice. It's like lanolin and, uh, and just, I don't know, fresh air. So that's, that's the color and I hope you can see it very well. And I want it, I desperately, now well, it changes colors because of my light. I desperately wanted this wool because of Michelle from Sewing Bunny. She is a, a huge influencer. When I watch her videos, I either, either buy fabric or want fabric or want something that she's made or... And I really like her. She's just such a sweet person. I bought it because I saw her ready to wear coat and it was orange. It wasn't this color, but I thought this color would suit me better or suit my wardrobe better as well. I bought it for this coat. And again, it is Waffle Yuki Pattern and uh, it's Papanut. <laughs> I have no idea how to say it, Papanit pattern. And I know that Andrea from Beyond the Pink Door is making this coat. So I'm looking forward to seeing her video. I'm not sure if I'm going to post this video after she's posted hers, but I am definitely looking forward to seeing how she makes hers. Because, well, I think it's a beautiful, beautiful pattern. It's got this A-line skirt part of the, the coat and it's got really interesting details again. I like the pockets, I've made the pockets before. It's got a hood that is three parts and can be embellished <laughs> with fur. And I think Andrea is doing her with fur. I'm not going to, to add any fur, <laughs> or any fur rim, because I don't like it. It gets in my eyes and I just, just don't like it. I like the look, but it's not for me. So mine is going to be without fur. But I wanted this wool <laughs> for this coat. Whether it's going to happen this year, I have no idea because I've got too many coats at the moment. I do. So because I've got too many coats, I bought more fabric 
for, for making codes, making even more codes. And again, this one is because of uh, Michelle from Sewing Bunny, because at first I saw this fabric. This is from a shop called Pound Fabric that you probably know about because a lot of people told me about this shop. But this is my first ever <laughs> shopping with them. So I had heard about the shop and about the good quality for extremely low prices. And I think all the coating that I'm going to show you is 550 or 6 pounds per meter. And I bought three of each. So this one is some sort of, it's 30% wool apparently, and 70% polyester. It is also orange because I thought I should make a muslin or wearable muslin of a coat with a hood. But we'll see, <laughs> we'll see. I am going to have a lot of orange coats. So I'm not sure what I'm going to do with that because that was going to be a muslin for the papanut <laughs> coat from Waffle Patterns, but I might do something else. I don't know. It is really good quality. I mean, it doesn't feel woolly as 100% wool. It's not like boiled wool, but I do love it for 550 per meter. That's a brilliant buy. Then I bought that simply because I liked it so much without any idea what to make out of it, but it is going to be a jacket or a coat. And I could probably even use it for her chubby, for my husband her chubby. Although I'm quite stingy and I think <laughs> that could make something really, really nice for me, myself. It could make good trousers or any sort of winter skirt as well, because it's not super heavyweight. And that was, I think, six pounds per meter. And also I got three meters. And then I got that. And it's also, I think it was sold as wool, that. I suppose it is a wool blend of some sort, maybe more than 30% of wool, that's why they call it wool. It is really good quality, sort of high street quality or even better. And again, for six or 650 per meter, brilliant. So if I ever want to use it for a coat that I'm not quite sure about, I've got a a lot of patterns that I'm not quite sure if they're going to work for me. That is something that I can use. And gray is one of my favorite sort of balance out colors because I wear so many colorful clothes. I need a lot of gray coats, overcoats, jackets, anything to sort of break this madness. And I'm going to show you something else because I got it as a present from Sue, from my mother-in-law. I've got the most wonderful mother-in-law who is a quilter and she also sews clothes and she's, she's extremely creative and she's extremely talented and experienced. She's my guru. I got that, that's wool from Abraham Moon. And as soon as I saw it, I opened my present. As soon as I saw it, I thought this is perfect. This is just absolutely ideal for me both the color, the texture, and I knew that it was good quality, but when she told me that it was Abraham, Abraham Moon wool, I thought, yeah, that explains everything. And I thought, because it's not super heavyweight, I thought it could be a summer jacket, well, summer, um, sort of spring jacket. I don't know, I haven't got a plan yet, but, and it's not, pre-steamed because I steam all my wool. I've made a whole video about what I do with the wool so you can watch the video if you're interested. Also she always <laughs> wraps her presents in fabric and this is gorgeous. She's a quilter, she's got the best fabric ever. And I think it's not loads but I think I can get away with like making something a top. I want a skirt, I thought that would make a perfect skirt if I line it. I love this color. I really want a skirt, I'm not sure. <laughs> Maybe if I lose some weight, we'll see. I think that should be enough if I don't make it too long. That's, I think it's half a meter-ish, about half a meter, <laughs> I really like it. But it's a brilliant idea to wrap presents in fabric because then the person who gets them can also use the fabric. If I can't use it for a garment, I'll make some sort of cosmetic bag or something out of it. I do use those quilting cottons because they, are, they last, you know, <laughs> they're quite good. And finally, I'm going to show you the fabric that I got from Dark Violent Prints. And thank you again, Michelle from Sewing Bunny. This video is sponsored by Michelle from Sewing Bunny. No, it isn't. But I watched her video and it was one of the 
things that some people do. I stopped the video, went to the shop, bought the fabric, then watched the rest of the video because I had to have it. She bought this fabric and she was showing this fabric, it's Ghibli Mash print. And I can't say that I'm a fan, but I like the print, I love the print. And I'd never heard about the shop, so it's violent, it's not violent, it's violet, dark violet prints. <laughs> it's not violent prints, it's dark violet prints. They have a group on Facebook that I joined and it's probably easier to order on Facebook, but I ordered from the website. You can't pay with PayPal, so you pay with the card. And it was a bit tricky because I couldn't, at first I couldn't find anything, but they are probably very, very new. So the website needs <laughs> some more fabrics to be added and, and all that, but they've got the most wonderful prints. This one is French Terry and I got two meters and uh, it's extremely good quality amazing so it stretches a bit the print is absolutely gorgeous it's not sort of badly printed that is going to wash away after the first wash i love it i had to go and find it but i wanted to show you that i also got a present so i got a key ring from them and i think it's really really cute i don't really use key rings i mean i've got one but it's super cute i love it Brilliant, and uh, the fabric is, depends on what fabric you buy, but I think it's about 15, 16 pounds per meter. I think French terry is slightly more expensive than cotton jazz is slightly less expensive. I would say around 15 pounds per meter, as far as I remember. I've only used them once, so I don't remember everything. But brilliant, they've got a lot of like Totoro, and if you're a fan of, I don't know, Batopia, things like that. They've got wonderful prints. They also print on demand, so apparently I've not used them for that. But yep, I can de definitely recommend them. And thank you, Michelle, <laughs> for making me spend even more because, of course, I don't need fabric. I promised myself not to buy <laughs> patterns or not to buy many patterns, but I got two for Christmas. I mean, I wanted them, so I said that I wanted them. To be honest, I, I kind of picked them up because I got a voucher from So Essential. So both are from So Essential. Some other things from So Essential as well. Vouchers are a good idea. I, I used to think that they're very impersonal, but now I think for somebody who sews and who can browse and choose their own things, why not? It's, it's a good idea, I think. Let me know if you think that they're absolutely stupid and nobody should give another person a voucher. But I, I kind of like them now. So I got the... Billy, well, jumper or jumper dress from Tilly and the Buttons. I know it's a simple pattern. I know that I could probably tweak my patterns, but I like Tilly and the Buttons and I think I want to, well, support the company. So I buy her patterns, not because I desperately need them. I don't really need any patterns, but I think she deserves <laughs> that and she deserves all the attention she gets because she made sewing very popular and very approachable and did no kind of fuss. She makes beginners want to sew because they succeed. So it's brilliant. And obviously her instructions are absolutely brilliant, the best ever. Then I got jelly pattern for men because I can't resist when I see a raglan sleeve. I, well, in theory, can draft them now if I've got a book and uh, yeah, but my drafting is not great. So I thought jelly patterns Again, they've got, they are cool because they've got all the sizes. So you've got boys sizes from two to 13. And I suppose that's the age because the, the height is from 92 centimeters to 155 centimeters. And I thought I am probably going to check if uh, this, well, boy size fits me as well. But I bought it to make her chubby or my husband a top or many tops because I like raglan sleeves. <laughs> on him and on me. And men's sizes are from 34, so XS, to 50, XXL. The chest for the smallest male size would be 84 centimeters, and for the biggest, 127 centimeters. So yeah, a huge, huge range. And that, that's it. And that's my promise that I wasn't going to buy any, any more patterns. I bought one more pattern from Lecala, but Lecala patterns, I like them. They are really well drafted, I think. And you choose your own very personal size. And I bought a dress that Sean from Kittenish Behaviour found and she thought it would be perfect for me. And it is perfect for me. So apart from that, I didn't really buy patterns <laughs> in January. 
<laughs> not yet. I'm going to use this opportunity to show you two makes as well that I well made. That's the end of December, <laughs> the very last day, I suppose. And that is the beginning of uh, January. So my first makes apart from my usual coat, but there are coats for my dogs or well, there are, these two are for Lily, for my smaller dog. And I didn't use a pattern, I drafted this one. This is a coat, it's lined with kind of quilted structured fabric. And this one, this fabric, is left over from my jacket, my all coaty jacket. The better one, I don't remember the number, but I also used trim, fur trim for the color because she's a little princess and, and she needed that. And I used snaps because I don't like Velcro for my dogs. And you know, I like snaps. <laughs> That's my snap hand press that I use a lot. And she's very happy and she looks very pretty. <laughs> This one is also self-drafted. I made a video how to sew a jacket or jumper or whatever for a dog. So you can watch it if you're interested how I make them. And I think they're perfect for her because she is not a lover of clothes, but they're loose enough. They fit her. She put on weight, so she needed some new jackets, coats, jumpers, and she's going to have many more because I've cut out, I think, six more. So you are going to see them in the next video. I have to go to work. Yes, it is, well, it is 6.30 at the moment, <laughs> so it's later than ever, but thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to like the video, subscribe if you want to see more, and see you soon. Bye!